Thank you, everyone, for coming to join us here at Show Studio. I'm editor at Show Studio, Hetty, and hopefully Franco B over here needs no introduction. Um, but I thought I would ask Franco if we could start by you introducing yourself and how you would define yourself and your practice, which is a horrible question to ask an artist, but I'm going to ask you to try and... Yeah, I'll try. Yourself. If I have to be honest, um, it's difficult, mm. apart from the... Um, I'm very unpredictable, not as an artist, as a person, I'm very unpredictable, schizophrenic, paranoid, certified, and then uh, art has what saved my life, really. It's impossible. I'm a visual artist. Let's mm. say that I'm a visual artist. What does it mean, though? I need to express myself, and art allows me to be who I am. When yes. you say that art saved you, yeah. could you expand a bit on that? Maybe some yes. early memories of art? Yes. <laughs> I'm not selling anything. i just show you. We so, love a uh, I'm not. I'm not Actually, if you want to know my story, you write to me, I'll send you a PDF for free. Yeah, I don't sell. But this, this, this yeah. is my life. Came out in 2018, it's sold out. I have a PDF and I send it to people when they ask me in English. It just came out in Italian. Because I'm, I'm, lovely photo I'm very you. famous in Italy, apparently. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here I'm the one, I'm the guy that used to bleed in England. I'm still the guy that used to mm. bleed. And I have improved, I've been told I have improved myself as a visual artist. I've been yeah. told this by many directors of museum, public in, in this country. Yeah, so it, I haven't given up, I live here. I've been married for 18 years. And I have a dog called Rocco, <laughs> and uh, I love London. But I teach, for the last 15 years, I've been a uh, professor in Italy. First in Macerata, they called me, and then Torino seven years ago, one of the oldest academy in Italy, run by the state, and I run my own class on sculpture and video sculpture, so my pra my, my didactic, my, my teaching is, is very, mm. you know, 300, 400, you know, kind of... Well, I'm interested there in terms of the relationship between you and your art. It's in my life in the sense that, uh, in many ways, I ran away from Italy 19, I didn't have anything. I was homeless in Venice, they kicked me out. And there was a coincidence, one of the boys I used to work with when I was a workshop said he was going to Holland by hitchhiking to buy LSD to bring back to Italy to sell acid. I said, I'll come with you. I was living in public gardens and stuff like that in Venice and then they kicked me out and then in Como where I used to work near there for six years and then I gave up washing up and then I decided, you know, I made decision without uh, a way being impetuous, you know, mm. uh, never. So I said, I come, you know, because uh, I, I only had a sleeping bag and what I was wearing, you know. And uh, I came out of institution when I was uh, 14 and a half and then I ran away from home when before I was 16. A family took me in the, the pizza restaurant and I was there washing up, working for little money, but they give me food and, uh, um, you know, what you call it, a roof to mm. live on for six years, and they kind of protect me from my family. My family would come around and ask me for money, my mother. I was considered a retarded child. I ate, I was certified schizophrenic, and, uh, I met my mother at seven, I was in an orphanage. So I, most of my life has been in institutions. So I feel very anti-institution, although now mm. I'm working one, but um, I'm a punk by nature, <laughs> you know? A punk saved me first because, you know, at the time, of course, you know, Cespisto were big. 
But, uh, you know, they were beginning to say, this is a F4, I want to go to England. But also I wanted to go to England because I saw images, you know, for abroad, you know, David Bowie, you know, you think, oh, he's, you know, transgre transgressive, you know, he likes boys, he likes girls, and I knew I liked boys. But I couldn't say it, yeah, although I was renting. I was kind of doing blog job for little money in stations and stuff mm. like that in Milan. On the way in France, we were hitchhiking. It was difficult to get out of Italy because uh, I had to do the army and the, your, on your identity card, they put at the back, you cannot leave the country, it's no valid for uh, abroad. So after the second attempt, I managed to, I stopped uh, a lorry. I've only hitchhiked to lorry because I knew that they didn't go through the normal. They just kind of got out and give the paper in another office and very rare they came, you know. So I got, uh, I was lucky. I stopped this guy. This guy knew exactly what I was doing. He said, you're trying to get out. I said, yes, I want to get on the other side of the tunnel. It was uh, the Mont Blanc tunnel and he said look and you know usually they don't come i just give them my paper or what i'm carrying and my and that's it and usually they don't come to check the load if they come to check it's your problem and it's okay i take a risk you know it was the second time they they threw me they threw me back you know it was lucky they didn't you know they didn't come to check what he was carrying, or there was other people in the lorry. And uh, at the other side, he left me, and I waited for my friend that was going to Holland, that he didn't have a problem with the army because his father died when he was young. And he told if you don't have a father, you're supposed to be supporting your mother, your family, but he didn't. Uh, and so on the, way to fr on the way to Holland, apparently, I don't think we knew, we were just hitchhiking. We got to Le Havre and uh, I s we saw a boat for London, so why don't we go to London? And we went to London. He tried to buy some acid from a guy, you know, we were asking, you know, selling acid. And then, he, of course, he got ripped off. And then we were like, uh, without money, and for about two weeks, we were going to Italian restaurant because we didn't speak a word of English to ask for bread or food. And one day I went in and I was, I didn't know it was the, off, there was the recruitment office, this restaurant of Spaghetti House. It was a chain <laughs> in this country, horrible Italian food, stay away. <laughs> it's a, you know, they'd be arrested in Italy, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they would go to jail for fraud, really bad. And he said, <laughs> I said, oh, can you give me, uh, I, I'm hungry, and it was at like 11 o'clock. And he said, you know what, we need a washing up at this other restaurant, just, uh, you know, in Green Park, Dover Street. Uh, the, the washing up hasn't turned up. If you want to eat, we, you can wash up for three hours and then we will feed you. And I said, okay. So he took me there around the corner. There was this manager, Sicilian manager, that took, took me in, really. He said to me, if you want the job, it's yours. I said, well, I'm homeless. And he said, I'll rent you a room. He rent me a room for a few months. Then the story is that I went to, I went to, I went to Wales for Magic Mushroom Festival, and I met a group of punk, gay punks there. And, and two months later, I was living with them in Brixton. The rest is history, really. I lived in Bristol for 15 years. Then in 95, I moved to Waterloo. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm interested in the relationship between you as an artist and your work and it being personal, but also the relationship to the audience, because mm. the audience and the viewer have always been obviously such a key part in your performance yes. work, but then you do so much other work outside the body art as well, which you were known for in kind of the 90s. Yes, so but I don't like the term. Yeah. Everybody has a body. Everybody works okay, with the body in one way or another. We have to take care of our body. We have to, 
we have to, you know, mm. we have to go to the toilet, we have to feed it, we have to care it, we have to pleasure it, you know, and mm. sometimes we have to pay it, unfortunately, yes. But how, what I'm interested in asking you is how responsible or interested you are in the audience's response I'm to your work to when you're making whatever medium that's in. What role does the audience play when you're making work? Very good question. I think audience is very, I mean, audience is only important that the work goes out from my art or mind, or let's say mm. studio, but it's not real. But, and then it's public, you know, I think you have to share language, whatever that is, you know, it's visual. It's uh, I dealing with language in many, many ways, and in my way, in a kind of dyslexic way as well. And then it's, I'm not so conscious in what I give to people, mm. you know, I just give. But the thing that works, I think somebody said that I don't deal with my pain. I talk about collective pain, really. Mm. It's not just, it's not about me, yeah. Although it comes from me, mm. but I want to talk about it. Yeah. I want to talk about shame, you know, because I was shamed as a child and I was shamed as a young adult and you know, I was brought up in a really extreme, I was brought up by priests and nuns. It wasn't very nice, yes. What about that idea? I used to be punished as, as a, a five for mm. pissing in bed, you know, by priest, you know, by putting me on a wall of a toilet, in a toilet room and said, this is where you pee. And if you think about it stupid, you know, you don't pee on the wall of a toilet, you know? Mm. You should have put me on the fucking toilet, you know? <laughs> really, uh, you know, if you think about it. You know, I'm more annoyed with that, how stupid it was. Yeah. You know, and then somebody later on will come and give me somebody mm. see one, you know? Somebody, you know, will come and say, who put you there? And I said, well, I don't remember his name. And I said, the priest, you know, and the chief will pull me down, you know? And yeah, and the priest will get upset, yeah. Three years later, less than three years later, I'm, I'm in this place called the Red Cross Institute for uh, fucked up kids, really. Poor, poor fucked up kids in Italy. Yeah, when I started to write my biography in 2011-12, I found out that this place was officially called, um, you know, an institute for retarded children, yeah. So I was considered a retarded. So when I call somebody retarded on Facebook, on Instagram, a politician, somebody gets upset with me, she used the word. I, I say, I hold the word, you know? Mm. I'm retarded, you know? <laughs> it's fine. So people get upset and say, if you don't like what I say, just don't follow me. You know, I block them. So <laughs> I, don't get, I don't upset them, you know? Yeah, I mean, in terms of how <laughs> when you put your work out and the response to it in the context of this exhibition, Shadow Ban, mm. have, does censorship or, does censorship ever concern you when it comes to your work or have you had issues in the past where you've been I have issues, been I've been censored and I've been, but yeah, but it doesn't worry me, mm. you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's like, mm. it's life. But has that, I don't care. Yeah. Has that changed or evolved now we're in this kind of age of social media where other people have control over sh kind of shadow banning your work. Has that no, been an issue for I you? I mean, you know, it's only pathetic meta <laughs> that every so often blocks me because I show my ass, you know. But, you know, but there's a <laughs> lot of tits, you know. I mean, Etsy, I was selling stuff on Etsy and I had a, you know, a drawing, a really, you know, rough drawing, like my drawing freehand of somebody with a dick in front of the face and they and they 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 censor, you know, and they, they're selling photos of teeth and cocks and people f they do, they have pornography, they you know, by being uh, yeah, stuff like that. Mm. But I don't care really, life is you move on. I don't I I I refuse for a long time. I mean there was a moment when I was young, I used to feel sorry for myself, but I don't, I don't. There's a moment, 
that decide I needed to move on. Mm. And I, it's fine. You find a wall, you, you find a way to go around or you turn back and go somewhere else, you know? Yeah. Can we talk a bit about your work as this form of language, which you often, you often refer to the different yes. mediums that you use as different tools of language yeah. and how that's evolved over your career so far? I don't like the word career. Okay, why? I think I don't like it. It's not career. No, it's a vocation. Yeah, I'd say my life and, I'm, and my son's a bit... It's a, it's, it's a, I religiously make art. <laughs> you know, yeah, so in a way, um, it's a religion, you know, no, not in the way people get, oh, religion, like that. But it's religiously, I'm religiously be myself and express myself. And it's a vocation. This is what I said to my student and my colleagues at the S S exam, a mission exam, I give a, I give a, like a, I tell them, if you're here for career, you're in the wrong place, I wouldn't do art, you mm. know, go do something else. Apply to IT course, a new technology, you know. But don't come to sculpture, you know, certainly not going to do well, you know. Not mm. because I don't believe in you, but because you're, if, it's, if you think you're going to, you know, by, by the time you're 25, you're going to have a mortgage and um, have three kids. Uh, this is their own place. You won't be able to do it, really. And so my colleague, she gets very annoyed, you know, she's more conservative. She thinks I'm too, kind of, you know, die. Oh, this she gets very <laughs> upset to me. I just say, okay, you know, you have your student. You select your student. And when we come to select people, I take the one she doesn't want. You know, I don't, it's very much the one mm. she doesn't want or the one that want me. And that's the thing, you know, people applying to the MA course, to the postgraduate. Even now in the undergraduate, people say, I want to work, I want, uh, I want, I want to be, I want to be with Franco B, you know. And this is what's happened. What's happened is that at the end, she has eight students and I take 20 students, you know, which is okay. But, mm. you know, that's the way it is. Yeah. Do you see your, your, artistic kind of output as tools of teaching as well, because they're always, I think, kind of catalysts for making other teaching? people think. I think teaching, I always say that I, I'm not a teacher and uh, I don't teach. I share what I know and what I don't know. Yeah, what I don't know, I get it from people, you know? Mm -hmm. And actually recently, I listened to a brilliant podcast on BBC He's, uh, he, was a f he was a foreign minister, he was a f Afghanist in Afghanistan. He's mm. uh, it's, it's ob obviously a Porsche boy, but he did a <laughs> three-part three podcast on BBC. It's very famous because uh, he criticised Boris and he left the Tory party. But it's not Labour, but he said he would vote to Labour. But, uh, he did a brilliant podcast up on ignorance, the value of ignorance. And it was amazing, really amazing. Yeah, and I think uh, you learn a lot from being ignorant, you know, if you share, if you talk to people, mm. yeah, and not, you know, you're not isolated. Um, the, the, the good thing, I mean, I always say there's three things that get me out of bed. I'm nearly 65, yeah? And uh, in January, and I said, there's three things, my dog, in this order, my dog, <laughs> my partner, and my student. Yeah? Mm -hmm. My dog is practical. And I said, at six o'clock in the morning, I need to take him out for peeing. So I do get out of bed. And I wouldn't, mm -hmm. probably, too much later if I didn't have him, you know? And it's, it's not just a practical thing, but it's an emotional thing. You know, it keeps me wanted to be here more. And I then mean, my partner and then my student, if I mm. wasn't now having this job, I think I would be certainly more closed in. Uh, I would just cut off from the world. And I think there's not much reason, really. I don't, I'm not afraid of that and I don't care about dying, you know? Mm. And I think uh, it's better 
it's better to be happy as much as you can and being functional as much as you can and then you know and then there's a point where I don't care I don't want to I don't want to get to 80s and you know being stupid and I, I, people can make out what I'm saying you know so I think uh, I want to be in control. I'm interested that your things that you make and art didn't make it onto that list of top three things, or is it just that it's so inherent no. to what you do that it's not even... No, make art is not the most important thing okay. for me. Yeah, art is not the most important thing. Okay. It's, it's necessary, but it's not important. Mm. It's something I do, because that is what I do. It's interesting you, you <laughs> mentioned that idea of necessity because yeah. I was rereading some old interviews with you where you were talking about when you did primarily performance and how that at that time was just what felt like the most necessary and urgent way yeah. of expressing yourself and how that then developed to sculpture, photography, yeah, lots of but things. I never, but in, I never left it. I come mm. from, a, you know, I went to paint. I, yeah. came, I went to Chelsea to do painting and then I did a postgraduate by I'm sure in alternative learning media at the time was mm. called, you know, that I, I wasn't making paintings, so I was doing photo performance for cameras, you know, and I became a, perf I mean, in a way I became a performance by, by accident, you know, in the way mm. that I was making, when I was at Chelsea in the second year, towards the end of the second year I decided I didn't want to be in the painting mm. department, so I went up to the alternative learning media department, which at the time was just sixteen me of film and uh, performance for camera, analog, mm. you know, and I really liked it. And it allowed me to create images I couldn't paint, or they were, I didn't like how people read them. I didn't like, people thought that I was this primitive, I could be successful because I was naive and I fitted in you know, in a fashion that could exist. And they were saying, if you carry on like this, you know, don't give up painting. You, you, you know, the, take, the Royal College will take you know, for. And also this thing, you know, I was making stuff that people liked, but because I was considered simple. And I had the primary school education only, and Chelsea took me. I lied on my foundation that I had a, I had this uh, level and then every day for the first two months they were at the secretary was asking me and I said oh you know I'm Italian my mama <laughs> doesn't speak to me I ask her to send her please but she doesn't and then became too late you know then I applied to Chelsea and at Chelsea I told them you know at the interview I didn't even know if they took me but no they, they cannot not that, that they would take me. I was a mature student, you know. I was very, you know, and I, I didn't have a portfolio. Mm. I, I had a friend that was a bricklayer. He had a van, a white van, man. <laughs> and we took this uh, four, four by eight painting, you know, and everybody in, in the waiting room were looking at me and laughing, you know, and I go in. You know, I go in because of m my energy, because maybe my madness, you know, and they thought maybe they wanted to help me. And also, they told me later on that what, why they gave me the place, it was my energy. Does your own history of work affect what you make now? Do you look back no. on it? I know you've ref you have referenced it before in some pieces, but, but, but do you just no. kind of look ahead? No. I think what influenced my work is maybe is, is, is who I am, which I, you know, I do not totally know who I am. It's and the con how does the context of kind of time and politics and social yeah, context? Yeah, of course, I mean, I mean, I'm affected by the world. I've, by what's happening and history. I say now, I've been saying for the last few years, I had this conscious moment where I said that I'm more like a, an historian. Yes, I, I make work which is about our history, you know, past, present, mm. future. But these three things don't, you know, I think maybe only the past mm. exists. The present, the present was a second ago, you know, and the future is, is just going. Yes, I'm talking to you. So 
And but I'm very, I'm very interested, especially with this piece of work, uh, AMIA, which I use uh, multi images projected map yeah. body, and the, about uh, colonial, about uh, all the shit, also the happy shit, but all the stuff, homophobia, mm. you know, s putting other people into submission for whatever reason, you know and stuff like that. So I took, I took, I make work about that recently. I done my new work, I, I performed in it recently. It's like I'm, I'm making, with ceramic, I make this, my own version of rosary, like Catholic rosary. But they are digs and the shapes, quite big shapes in ceramic and art digs, crosses and writing like a, significant mm. on them and um, for each of one I say a little story which is other my own biography but mostly 6040 is biography of the world you know in a way I'm a biographer of what I know of the world yeah and um, I just done uh, last two years ago I started a project that now I finished, which uh, more than 100 people, artists, philosophers, historians, etc., that deal with pains. Yeah. So, pains is a big thing, mm. but it's collective pains. It's mm. the pains that we carry, that we are, that memory carries. And I'm really interested in, I really like uh, Tommy Robinson, this um, Afro. Uh, American artist that died a few years ago, she says the artist, the artist is not just uh, somebody that makes things, but he's a thinker, you know, he's a philosopher, and he's an historian, and um, we are witness, has to be a witness of the moment we live in, that, you know, mm -hmm. he, has to, he has to be a testimony, a witness for, for everybody else. You know, so I'm a testimony of this moment and the moment I affect and the moment before, you know, mm. not the future. Mm. You know, in the early days, people used to call me a monster. You know, you're a monster, your work is uh, it's monstrous. And at first, I was offended. And then I went to look where it comes from, you know, it comes from the word Latin, mostrare. A monster is somebody that's yours. So this place is a monster. Do you think you're always fully conscious in your work of what's influencing it? Have you ever, no. do you look back on your work and see, maybe see more in hindsight where the influences or the effects came from? Not really. Maybe I'm not capable to do okay. that. I don't, I don't consciously do it. Okay. I don't know if it maybe subconsciously is happening, mm. but not, not. Not so consciously. I was also very interested in uh, jumping, you know, in a way that, it's good not to be, I, I hate it when, because you know, earlier on, when, I, when in 2005, I said, I'm not gonna perform anymore, no be blood, you know, I'm not gonna do this. And uh, now is, this person is a professor, he was uh, my assistant at the beginning, it's a performance, uh, it's, a, it's a professor, Dominic Johnson, uh, Queen Mary, and he said to me at the time, you know, this is your signature. And I said, so what? Yeah. No. Yeah, resistance I refute to that. that. I refute and it's not, I don't want to. I don't want to be, I, then I said, I don't want to be like Gilbert and George I did the same shit for the last 50 years. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And that's what they think, you know, when people especially, you know, I don't really work with commercial gallery as an artist. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes commercial gallery might ask me to put in a work, but I'm not going to be, I don't want to be represented by anybody mm. commercially. No, I work with galleries, but I don't want to be their um, Remboy, yeah? And I always say that I offended somebody. I was with some, a, a quite big gallery in Italy called PAC, P-A-C-K, Abondio. Um, and I said to him, I don't need a pimp. I used to sell my body for like less than five pounds, you know? 
and I didn't have a pimp, and now I need a pimp to sell my art. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we can all go and leave on that thinking note. Thank you, you so much, Avram. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Such an honour.